hello and welcome to this special edition of Let's Talk Darts. I'm AJ Ermston Toft of the Darts World Weekly Podcast. And to celebrate the launch of issue 585, we've got an exclusive interview with the current PDC world champion Luke Coolhands Humphreys. It has been an amazing journey for Luke over the past six months with winning the Grand Prix and then the Grand Slam and the Place Championships and then finally hit climbing to the top of the mountain as PDC world champion. With this interview, we highlight the achievements and we also discuss the journey. It's been a whirlwind since that world championship win. So we've got a small podcast, ask you a few questions and we'll go straight in. So we spoke last to you after your maiden TV ranking win at the Grand Prix. You did hint there was more to come. But did you think the rest of the year would go as well as it did? Um, I mean, I was hoping that maybe I could follow up with the Grand Prix success with another major title if, if it was possible. Um, but no, I didn't really think it was going to go the way it did, to be honest. I think after the the, the Grand Prix, um, I was just looking to maybe assert myself and keep playing well. But then obviously everything followed uh, afterwards. Um, winning the Grand Slam was massive in my quest of being world champion because that was another stepping stone that gave me that extra bit of belief. You know, the first one obviously wasn't a fluke, the Grand Prix, but, you know, you think, I've had my success now, maybe I have to wait next year to, to the, for the rest of it. But after that Grand Slam and then obviously winning the Players' Championship Finals, um, you know, winning three major tournaments for the Worlds, I was more well-equipped than ever to go on and be world champion then, gave me that extra bit of belief. So, it, it obviously, I exceeded all expectations in what I thought was going to be, you know, a steady end to the year. So, the World Championship final aside, which of the other finals do you think you've actually played the best darts in? Consistently, the best tournament, of, including the World Championship, was the Grand Slam. Um, I thought I, I played, I think I had five out of the six games, were, well, six out of the seven games were 100 averages. Um, and the final was one of the and, highest. Yeah, and it was one of the highest ever in the, in the Grand Slam final, so... I thought out of all the four I played in, that was the one that was the most consistent and the most well-polished tournament I've, I've ever played in to this day now. And Rob was on great form, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, you came out in the final. And, and I, just... you know, the Gary Anson game in the quarterfinals was an incredibly tough one. Um, the James Wade game in the semifinals was a tough one just because it's really hard to beat James Wade. You can, you know, you could seem strange, but you can never really beat your best against him. You just have to grind, grind the win. Um, and then the final against Rob, the way I started, the way I kept the pressure on him constantly... Um, was really, really aesthetically pleasing. Um, it was just a really well polished tournament. I think I probably deserved it that that tournament you know, more than ever. Um, but yeah, that, that that was definitely the out of the four is the is the one where I look back on and thought, you know, I really did, um, you know, deserve to win that tournament for sure with my performances. And some pundits and people, there was, you know, talk you might suffer from tiredness or burnout after such a phenomenal spell leading up to the worlds. Um, you had a grueling few games at the Ali Pali. Did you feel the strain at any point? And if so, how do you manage that? Well, since, um, say, the match play, I've played more darts than any other person in, in the world. You know, I've been in every single final session, in every single major since that moment. Um, I was in the final session of the World Series finals, final session of the European Championships, the Grand Prix, the Grand Slam, the Players' Championships and the Worlds. So I've played more darts than anybody. Um and it is tough because regardless of people, you know, you've got three or four days off in between sometimes the tournaments, it's mentally tiring. Um, you know, your mind is just all about the arts. It is really tough. And I, I, I do feel at this moment when we're sat right now, you know, I'm not burnt out, but your mind's quite tired because it's constantly on the go. Um, but this is just a new experience that I have to get used to and will get used to. Um, you know, I still feel like I'm playing well. And I did play really well last year. So I don't think anything's changed performance-wise. I just think uh, the burnout can affect you in, in certain moments. But, you know, mentally it can be more tired than physically. So how do you find yourself reinvigorating your energy? Do you do, you do that um, just going back to the family and having quiet time and just being away in the, in the countryside? Or how, how do you recharge those batteries? I think the best way to, to do it is just go live in a normal life with your family. Like just spending time with my son. Uh, my girlfriend, my stepdaughter, you know, and my dog, you know, just being at home. That is where you recharge your batteries. I feel like um, you feel a, a normal person again. You know, when I step out nowadays, it's very 
very rare that you don't get recognised in after pictures, and it's all a different scenario for me. It's all pretty new. But when I'm at home, I feel normal again, and uh, you know, life feels Back to it. yeah, it feels yeah, it does, and it just feels normal and it feels nice. So I think that I appreciate time at home more now than I ever have done in, in my whole life. Yeah, and that will probably become more as as the years go on. So, um, did you think though at any point during the Ali Pali in the World Championships that you were actually going home? De- well, yeah, for sure against Ricardo Patrizio, I felt like you know once I was three three one down, and let's be honest, I wasn't playing very well. Uh, I did I didn't really. There was no part in that game where I felt like there's, there's a comeback in me here because I'm, I'm playing all right. Flat. You looked flat. I was. Yeah. I felt flat. Nothing was really happening for me. I was trying too hard, maybe, to get things to work. And then, obviously, as I come off on the break from sets, you know, 3-1 down the next three, I, I seem to find something where I sort of don't know where it come from, to be honest. And, you know, that was just one of two games I felt, you know, against Joe, 2-0 down in that game. I felt not flat, but I just didn't I didn't feel comfortable. And then as soon as I come back from and that break... And he was playing very And well. he was playing yeah. good, yeah. Joe so was, I, it was... It's still, I think, one of my favourite games of the championship. I was, you know, that was a great final against Luke Littler, but I still, to this day, think that's one of the best games I've ever played on the stage. I enjoyed it as much as it was stressful. I enjoyed it. It was one of the best games I've ever been a part of. The rhythm of it was fantastic. It was just bang, bang. I, I do like playing yeah. GR. I think we both get on with the game. There's no tactics. There's no, like, slowing people down. You know, me and Joe are just rat-tat-tat. And I think it's a, a great game for the future with us two because... We do suit each other's play styles, and we, we've had a couple of good games over the years. To be fair, but so uh, yeah, that was another game that I felt like could have could have gotten away from me, but it, you know, luckily it didn't. No, and clearly, then you know, how did you then prepare for the final? Because it didn't seem that you were distracted or intimidated by all the hype going on around the whole tournament mm. with with Luke Littler. Um, but did you prepare for the final any differently? I mean, once I'd beaten Joe, I felt, you know, I'm very, very lucky to still be in this tournament. You know, is this, is this, you know, is my name written on this trophy? Because I've faced so much adversity to get to where I was. And then I put in a great performance against Dave um, and I felt a little bit more myself. I tweaked my throw a little bit. I felt like I was pulling them down a little bit with my, my forefinger. So I, I changed the grip on the on the point to, to move it a bit closer to, to my finger now. Um, just that slight adjustment because it wasn't nothing. Whatever I was playing, like it wasn't working, so I changed that and I played well against Jizzy with it. So and there was that. Was that you're talking millimeters? Yeah, oh, you're talking really, really like sat in the middle of my thing of my fourth finger. So it sat right in the middle here, and I literally changed it to go a bit more forward. So I got a bit more control. So you're talking three millimeters. But I do this a lot throughout my career. You know, sometimes it's further back and then it sits in the middle and then it sits at the front. Then I'll sort of and close. that's the groove in the end of the point. Yeah. And it, it sits differently in in this bit in my forefinger on the on this bit here. It sits so that, different places. So for those obviously people won't be able to see this, no. here, but I'll try and explain. That's your, the ring finger, yeah. is essentially on your right hand, yeah. and it's between so, the crease and between, you think. Yeah, so that feel in that finger can ultimately be where you feel your entire yes. game. Then sometimes it, you know, from the crease to the fingernail, it's about two centimeters, isn't it? Two and a yeah, half centimeters, max, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it can vary where it sits, that point, that point where it sits on my finger. Usually it sits in the middle. But sometimes it just doesn't feel right and you feel like it's just not working. So I'll move it forward half a, you know, half a centimetre or a centimetre till it's just on the, the edge of my finger. Um, and that's what I did. against. Does that, does that then give you a different mental trigger when you throw it? It does because sometimes you pick it up and it, it sits there and it comes out your hand nicer. And then all of a sudden it'll stop working and then you'll go back to it being in the middle. And then it will, will that 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 situation will work better. So I feel like people might find that strange, but my throw can vary every week. Like it will, I will never change the dynamics of where it sits in my hand, but I can change the dynamics of where the point sits point, in my finger. Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's the that's the point. If you get it, where yeah. you know it's exactly the same every time. Yeah. So I, you're just you're just using it as like a scale across yeah. that end bit of the finger ultimately. Yeah. Like it won't change millimetres, but it'll either be back a bit more, middle or front. And is that intentional when it comes out of the hands from the transfer from left to right hand then? Are you intent or yeah, is that I'll, just happening automatically? No, I'll, I've, I've made the conscious decision to change it. So I won't be going, if I've changed it that day, I won't like start throwing it in the middle of my finger and then go to the end of it. I decided it wasn't working in the middle, but it, all the success that I'd had, Previously, it had been sat in the there. middle position. But I know that I'm in good both sides, so I'd put it forward a bit more. I felt like I had a bit more control. That's why I did it. Um, and it was dropping in better. So I yeah. decided to do that with the Chisnell game. 
and it worked well. So I thought, well, I'm going to carry it on now because I play a lot better than I did in the previous round. Yeah. And then obviously the Scott Williams games was statistically the best game I played on TV. Um, and then for me, now I'm feeling like, right, well, this new adaptive throw, I feel really good with it. I'm in a world final. I'm going to stick with it because I feel like this could take me, or this could take me to glory. You know, it felt right. And then in the final against Luke, that's the only thing I prepared differently was I changed my throw slightly in a little way. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, obviously a lot of attention's on him. It's not so much on me. Um, and unfortunately for even him... Though, even though you were, you are, at that point, the best player on the planet. Yeah. I still felt like they thought he was going to beat me. Um, and I, I can understand why people thought that. And, you know, sometimes that can creep into your mind thinking, you know, is he better than you? But I believe that I had more experience. I think that did tell. I think the experience, he'd never played a game of that magnitude at such a long period of time. You know, that's first of seven sets is is an incredibly long format. And you came out the blocks quick. He came back at yeah. you. He had darts to take, to like five, you said, about, uh, as experience. Yeah. Uh, but from that point, you never looked back. No, once I made it 4-3, I, I, I felt good at the start and then I felt a little bit flat in between. Um, and then when I, I think the thing that really kicked me at the backside was when I got, got that set. You know, he think uh, he missed a dart, didn't he? I won four for it. And I thought five two down, that could have been it. You could, you yeah. know, you're facing a real uphill battle. You're lucky you're going in four three. You're in a world final. You're still in this now. You've got a chance to go out and turn things over. And obviously, I come back from the break, and um, you know, it all just started going well for me. And it started dropping in, and my belief started getting higher. My confidence started getting higher. He was still playing well, but I feel like I reached this level where I was hitting one eight for fun. It felt like I could. 180 every throw. That's how it felt. It felt like I could keep hitting 180s every throw. And, you know, it, it was happening. And are you aware of the crowd, the people around, or are you, are you just in a zone? Well, I was. I think I have to give credit to the crowd because I felt like, you know, I had some hard moments in, in that tournament where it felt like everyone was against you. Um, and then, you know, in the, in the final, I felt like the crowd was so fair. Like the, they, they were very fair. Very yeah. fair. Like yeah. they wanted him to win. And I understood that. Of course, I knew that. But they wasn't like trying to put me off, trying to stop me winning. They were just wanting Luke to win. And, I, and that was great from them to, you know, they allowed a great world final in the end. That was yeah. why I have to give and, them and, credit. And, and it was as rewarding whenever any major, the amazing moment happened. They supported Yeah, both. and, they, that was, and yeah, if Luke, yeah, Luke Lillard was going to win it, he was going to have to win it, you know, through doing it on his own ability and not, you know, crowd help or anything like that. Um, but, you know, they were great. I thought, when I, when I, I remember after it finished, I remember thinking, you know, fair play to the crowd. They were they were amazing. They really were. They were clapping my good scores. They were cheering Luke. Um, and I had a little bit of support, of course, but yeah, I just think they were they were really good and they, you know, allowed it to be a great final. And yeah, the credit goes to them for that. It was. And has it now sunk in being the world champion when you get announced like at the Premier League world champ? How does that feel now? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a feeling that you just first thing you think of when you win the world title is you think, wow, you know. And you sit down and you think, you think, you know, that toe is going to live with me forever yeah, now. Defines you, know, you it, forever. It, yeah, it, it's, it's something that will always be, you know, on my name. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being announced as the Grand Prix champion or the Grand Slam champion, but I'll always be announced as the world champion. I'll always be the first thing that comes to light when either John, how long he goes for doing MC and or whoever the next person is. That's always going to be next to my name, whether yeah. it's reigning, current. Um, or former so for the rest of my career I have that and that is just worth everything in itself so when he does announce me like that that's when you yeah you, you realise what, what you've the magnitude of what you've achieved and you've bashed down the door of the Premier League now um, is there an element of I told you so about that or are you just enjoying being there I'm enjoying it I think you know it's a new experience for me personally because the way everything went last year I, I wasn't expecting myself to go in the Premier League and, and smash everybody up and you know finish top and everything's going to go. I'm still learning my trade. I'm still young in, in terms of darts ages. You know, I'm still growing and I'm the world number one and world champion and I still feel there's levels that I can get to. I can get better. I know that. Um, but it's a new experience because I'm used to being away two or three days. Yeah, two or three days a week. Now it's four or five days a week. So I'm away a lot more. It's a lot more challenging, but it takes time to get used to. It does. Is that because you've got quite an intense style of play for how you get so much into the game to play it. Do you feel that's harder for to have so much darts and prepare with that sort of style? Yeah, it's being away from home a lot, but I practice more. I think when you're when we're at TV time stuff, I practice more than any other player. 
I'm sort of on the practical quite a lot, whereas some other players, they don't really tend to practice as much. In between the events? Yeah, like, yeah, but not just that on the nights we play. Um, so, you know, I'll get there three and a half hours before maybe and I'll practice about two and a half of them. And um, in that practice, is it is it just literally throwing at anything or are you actually specifically doing set games and routines? Well, the first sort of hour, I'd just be throwing at triple 20, triple 9, triple 8, you know, just scoring and stuff. And then obviously you'll integrate, once you're warm, fully warmed up, then you'll start integrating like one two one. you know, me and Michael Van Gogh and practice a lot at the Premier Leagues together. We'll do like one two one and 9 and stuff. That's a little game you play or... Um, so you are having some form of yeah, competitive yeah, game competitive. before you get up there. Yeah, so you know, you're know you doing regimes, but I seem to practice more. So I'm playing a lot more darts than, than most people, so it can tire me out a little bit more. Um, but I'm used to doing that you know, two days a week, players' championship, players' championship, or a Euro Tour weekend, whereas now it's uh, going to be players' championship, players' championship, day off, Premier League, day off, and then you know you might get one extra day off and then you're back again, or, or Euro Tour. So... You know, it's it's harder because I'm playing a lot more. And with that playing a lot more, um, do you feel, have you got any aims for 2024? And are they affected, do you think, by the fact you've got a big target on your back now? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to be real, a realist and say, you know, I'm not going to set myself targets that are too crazy. I think, you know, I want to win another major title this year. Uh, I'd love to sit here and say I want to win two or three or four, but the, the, want to win them all. <laughs> yeah, of course I want to win <laughs> every player, everyone. Yeah, yeah. But I think a realistic goal is to win another one. I really want to. I really want to win a majors. Um, you know, the world champion and the world number one. Um, another goal is to to stay as world number one as uh, after the world championships this year. If I have a good year, I could make it impossible for anybody to be able to overtake me, if they, even if they win the worlds. Um, so that's a goal to stay world number one. Um, to win a major title but obviously I want to be back to back world champion now you know obviously that's something that not many people have got on the of, on their resume you know Michael Van Gogh hasn't got that um, and I want to have something that not many people's got I think it's Gary Adrian and, and Phil Denny, Denny three yeah. that are, are back to back PDC world champions so um, that's that's the goals this year being world champion it's an amazing feeling and one that you don't want to lose so I definitely want to go and try and win it again this year Well look you are Thoroughly, one of the nicest guys we know. Um, you've got that intense competitive streak in you. You want to win. And it's always a pleasure being with you. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. So there we have the interview with Luke Humphreys. A very compelling uh, discussion there between the two. I hope you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to purchase the new edition of Darts World magazine, issue number 585 from all good retailers. Or if you want to, you can go onto the Darts World magazine website dartsworld50.com my name's aj ermston toft and thank you for joining us